You want to know what bottles of bourbon have gotten better with time? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? Nathan here with The Everyday Drinker bringing you guys a brand new video. Today we're going to go over some bottles of bourbon and whiskey that, you know, you get some bottles that are pretty good in the beginning or they're just so-so and you go back to those bottles over time and they have just become a really, really delicious pour. And I know a bunch of you have had those bottles and I have had my share of those bottles. And I'm gonna go over those six bottles of whiskey that have gotten better with time. Before we do, like I've been saying, this bottle of Blanton's could be yours. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button. When the time comes at 5,000 subscribers, we're gonna be doing a giveaway for this bottle of Blanton's and for your everyday drinker swag. Another lucky winner is going to get their choice of the black hoodie and t-shirt or the Heather Gray t-shirt and hoodie. But without further ado, let's get to bottle number one. Bottle number one goes to Old Grandam Bonded. I picked this bottle up because I couldn't find the Old Grandam 114. And you all know how much I love that bottle. In this bottle, I picked it up thinking that it would be pretty, pretty similar to that Old Grandam 114. And in the beginning, it wasn't. It was a little bit harsh. It was a little bit bitter. You know, it drank a little bit hot for that bonded 100 proof. But over time, over a month or so, I let this sit after the first couple of pours and it really opened up very, very beautifully. It has a very rich peanut note in there. It has a really nice leather tobacco-y note in there. And this bottle has opened up beautifully and I really enjoy this old granddad bonded. Bottle number two. Bottle number two goes to Nulu. Now, I've had a couple of pours of Nulu. I had a sample sent to me of a Nulu, and I'm not quite sure how open that Nulu bottle was. So I poured a little bit of that Nulu uh, sample that I had, and it was just a little flat, right? I didn't really, I mean, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't like, wow, this is knocking my socks off for how expensive Nulu products are. After I had that sample, I let that sample sit for a little bit, poured the rest of that sample maybe three months later, and it opened up amazingly. And the same thing happened with this one here. Now this right here is the Nulu single barrel, and this is a SLB pick, and it had the same components as that sample, right? Opened it up, and it was good. It was really good, but there was it could have had more, right? And over time, this bottle showed what it had. And it's one of those bottles that it's like really, really dry on the palate, but it's a, it's a very enjoyable dry. It's like a really dry red wine in a way, right? This has, it has this really nice toffee caramel on there after it opened up and it didn't have that in the very beginning of the bottle. And after having it for a while, letting it sit, this bottle has opened up very nicely. Now, bottle number three is one that you open it up immediately and it is a hitter. It's a really good bottle. But there are some bottles that they're fantastic in the beginning and they just get better. They can get better and this is one of those. Old Forester 1910 Old Fine Whiskey. Now, this is a double barreled bottle of bourbon from Old Forester. It's a toasted barrel and man, it is a incredible pour right off of the bat but you let that bottle sit after having a couple of pours out of it and it opens up into this magical world of just marshmallows and toastiness. And at 93 proof, this is one of those bottles that I'll always recommend to beginner bourbon drinkers because of how complex those flavors are and they're so easy to find in the beginning. But after a while, you let this bottle sit, those flavor prof the flavor profile of this goes from here to here. It is just an incredible pour. Absolutely love it. Got to get a new one here in the near future. Drink a little bit, let it sit for a while, and go back to it and find those beautiful nuances that this bottle has to offer. Bottle number four goes to the Old Elk Double Wheat. Now, this is not a bourbon. This is a wheat whiskey. It sits at 71.5% wheat, 25% corn, and 3.5% barley. So there is absolutely no rye in this, no rye spice whatsoever. It's also a uh, six, seven, and eight year aged whiskey. So it has a little bit of that age profile in it. When I first opened this and I had my first sip out of this, this was a graham cracker cereal in a bottle. 
And I'll tell you, after I've had this for, I'd say I think I've had it for a year. I just had a sip of this the other night for the first time in a very long time. And it's got a very, very, very broad flavor profile. It, it, I still find that graham cracker cereal note in there, but that's on the back end now. And now it's got this really nice dark rich honey, has a decent amount of caramels in there, but it's not something that's gonna be super spicy. If you like your ride bourbons and whatnot, this is not gonna be the bottle for you. But after a while, this bottle does open up to be a little bit more complex than it was in the very beginning. Bottle number five goes to Barrel Vantage, and I enjoyed the pour of this bottle in the very beginning, and I know a lot of you did as well. But let your bottle sit for a little bit. You get those tropical notes in the very beginning, but after letting it sit, holy bajoli, it's like having fruit salad in a glass. And it's got this touch of a coconut on the tail end of the palate that is just an absolute beautiful sip. And man, oh man, this Barrel Vantage, this bottle right here, just let it sit on its shelf for a little bit and it will open up so, so beautifully and you will enjoy it just as much as I do. Bottle number six. Bottle number six goes to the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Strength. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first opened this bottle of bourbon, it was a fire in my mouth. Now, granted, it is a very high-proofed bottle of bourbon sitting at 131.9 proof, so almost 132 proof. It is the highest proof bourbon on my shelf. I love my proof. The proof isn't always in the pudding, right? You know, but this one just drank super, super hot in the very beginning. I found a touch of that banana note that you always get in Jack Daniels, but it just wasn't super enjoyable. I did a blind with a bunch of my barrel strengths and this had come in last. And it was because it was just super, super hot. And after a while, I let this bottle breathe and it opened up magnificently. It is a really, really enjoyable pour now. Uh, those ethanol notes, uh, they dissipated a little bit, and now I'm finding a lot more characteristic coming out of this bottle that I wasn't finding in the very beginning. And if you have a bottle of this Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Strength that's a higher proofer, and you found those just hot notes in the very beginning and you were turned off in the very beginning to go back to it, I highly recommend you go back to it and see what you can find in that bottle because if your bottle is anything like mine, it opened up very, very nicely and I highly recommend going back to your Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Strength. So there you guys have it. Those are the six bottles of bourbon and whiskey that were okay in the beginning or they were really good, but they opened up to be an immaculate pour, right? These bottles, after a while, you know, going from the old granddad bonded being a subpar pour to being a really nice pour now, this bottle can be an anything, any day kind of pour to the Jack Daniels, you know? This was a, a highly sought after bottle for a lot of people and it just was a little, it was a little hot in the very beginning, but now over time, it opened up. Let me know down in the comments what bottles of bourbon opened up for you over time, but until next time, this has been Nathan with The Everyday Drinker. Cheers.